Marley's Moitzi, known as Marissa Mel, was born on February 24, 1939, in Graz and died on May 16, 1992, in Vienna, is an Austrian actress, much of whose career has been spent in Italian cinema. Marissa Mel grew up in Graz under the name Marley's Thiers Moitzi. From the start, she was passionate about theater. She attended the Graz School of Drama, then the Max Reinhardt Seminar Institute in Vienna. In her class, there were among others Erika Pluher and Senta Berger. Because she wanted to become an international star, she changed her name to Marissa Mel. After finishing drama school, she married the Swiss Henry Tucci. But the marriage did not last. Her first international success came in the 1963 film directed by Ken Russell, French Dressing. These are my top 10 movies for Marissa Mel. At number 10. College Girl on Vacation, 1980. Massimo Castaldi, Montagnani, is a social climber married to Violante, Marissa Mel, who comes from a rich family. His relationship with his mistress Laura, Cinzia de Ponte, is jeopardized when the family moves to their summer house on the Pugli East Coast. Nevertheless, Massimo seems to find a solution. His raunchy daughter Sonia, Sabrina Siani, failed in Italian, and he plans to present Laura as a nun who will give Sonia private lessons for her compensation exam. On the other hand, there are two dim-witted criminals, Terenzio, Alvaro Vitali, and Fulgenzio, Gianni Ciardo, who are planning to abduct a Castaldi family member for good ransom money. At number 9. Secret Agent Super Dragon, 1966. CIA agent Brian Cooper, known as Super Dragon, investigating the strange behavior of college students in a small town in Michigan, discovers that they are being drugged through chewing gum and candy. Investigations lead Cooper and agents Cynthia Fulton and Babyface to Amsterdam, where they establish communication with another agent, Charity Farrell. Fernand Lamas, a Venezuelan, is discovered to be the wealthy ringleader behind an international organization plotting to sabotage the United States through the drug, which renders its victims helpless. Charity is revealed as a double agent in the power of Lamas, who is holding back the antidote needed for her release from the drug's effects. Cooper tricks Lamas into giving him the formula for the antidote, but he is too late to save Charity. At number 8. The Great Swindle, 1971. Carla, Marissa Mel, a well-known prostitute in better circles, and the wealthy industrialist Luis Montalban, Fernando Rey, begin an affair after a few meetings. However, Carla is now in a relationship with the attractive waitress Lola, Solva Casina, whom she had lost sight of in the meantime. Through her friend, Lola gets to know the rich businessman, who from then on only has eyes for her until the two finally get married. The two women lose sight of each other again until one day Carla learns from the newspaper that Montalban has died, who crashed his jet. Now her assistance is needed, but it seems as if she is up to something else. Is it revenge, is it love? Together with the artist Arthur, Stephen Boyd, who once saved her from jumping off a cliff, and who has been her lover for a long time, she forges a plot. At number 7. Casanova 70, 1965. Major Andrea Rossi Colombati, Marcello Mastroianni, is a handsome man who can easily charm ladies. The only problem is that he's only turned on when he's in perilous situations. This condition leads to many mishaps involving, among other things, breaking and entering, lion taming, and an aristocratic murder scheme. Eventually, the suave and perpetually single Andrea reconnects with his old flame, Gigliola, Verna Lisi, and they fall back into a romance, but can he keep his condition in check? At number 6. Casanova and Company, 1977. While hiding from the royal authorities, Giacomo Casanova, the famous romancer, encounters his look-alike. Giacomino, a fugitive petty con man. Meanwhile, the Arabian Caliph and his wife are arriving in Venice for a state visit, and she insists on a night with the legendary lover. Through a series of erotic encounters and mistaken identity comedies, Giacomo and Giacomino make their way back to Venice for their appointment with the Caliph's wife. At number 5. Amori, Lady E. Tradimenti, 1976. Rome. Mordecai, a Lombard industrialist interested in an agricultural fund, is hampered in his interests by the stubbornness of Baldo, a farmer who is also the owner of the aforementioned land and who does not intend to sell it for any reason. The industrialist tries to enter Baldo's psychology, looking for negotiation with him, as he is determined not to give up, and finally Mordacchia comes to a compromise, Baldo is allowed to come, 
and live in the wealthy residence of Mordakia in exchange for the transfer of its property. At number 4. Marta, 1971. Don is an emotionally disturbed man who has visions of his mother and ex-wife Pyler being bludgeoned to death. He lives alone in a mansion with two servants. One day Marta, a beautiful woman who resembles his ex-wife, shows up on the doorstep. She's on the run. When she confesses to him that she killed a man, he helps her hide the body. At number 3. Beast with a Gun, 1977. Sadistic no-count killer Nanny Vitali and three other equally brutish hoodlums escape from prison. The foul foursome embarks on a savage rape, murder, and robbery spree. Vitali even abducts and defiles frightened hapless last Giuliana Caroli. Meanwhile, rugged police inspector Giulio Santini is determined to bag the despicable Vitali. At number 2. One on top of the other, 1969. In a controversial career that flayed every envelope of cinematic excess, nothing can prepare you for this stunning thriller from the infamous director of Zombie and the Beyond. Gene Sorrell, Belle de Jauer, stars as an arrogant San Francisco doctor trapped between his sultry mistress, Elsa Martinelli of Blood and Roses, and an amoral stripper, Marissa Mel of Danger, Diablic, who bears an uncanny resemblance to his recently deceased and possibly murdered wife. What follows has been called Falsi's first true masterpiece, where sexual obsession, cruel deception, and depraved murder all come together in one unforgettable perversion story. At number 1. Danger, Diabolic, 1968. Inspector Ginkgo is jubilant. Diabolic, the elusive burglar, has just stolen an armored van loaded with vulgar newspaper clippings under his nose. The $10 million he wanted to steal are well protected in the rolls where Ginkgo parades in front of Sergeant Danek. Suddenly, an explosion makes the two policemen fly out of their vehicle, which a crane throws into the sea. All that remains for Diabolic is to recover the loot by diving into the waters of the port. Eva Kant, his accomplice and companion await him not far from there, on the road to their secret lair, where all kinds of treasures are piled up. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Please stay tuned, don't forget to subscribe and like the video. Thank you, enjoy your day.